The parties in this case are the state of South Dakota, and the respondents are several online retailers, including Wayfair, who's the named respondent. It basically started a couple of years ago when Justice Kennedy effectively invited a reconsideration of, of a precedent, a case called Quill. The state of South Dakota decided to pass legislation knowing that it was not consistent with Quill for the express purpose of having the law be challenged and teeing up the issues. What's at issue here is the state sales tax. So I think most of us are probably used to when we make a purchase of seeing that line and some of it will be a percentage of the sale that'll go to the state. Sometimes it's a percentage of a sale that'll go to a municipality. South Dakota doesn't have an income tax. Um, so it does rely on, on sales and, and use taxes. The precedent in Quill basically imposes what's been known as a physical presence requirement that has to do with when the state can impose a sales tax. So for example, if a company is doing business, is selling to folks in South Dakota, but it doesn't have a presence in South Dakota, then a sales tax is not owed. The constitutional doctrine in this case, it's focused on interstate commerce and the extent to which taxing businesses or companies that don't have a physical presence in a state acts as a burden on interstate commerce. One state in regulating issues that concern it should not be able to essentially burden interstate commerce. The best argument for Wayfair may be the force of stare decisis. Stare decisis is the principle, it basically boils down to the thing has decided. And it's the principle that would say when we look at overruling a precedent, we look not only as to whether it was right or wrong, but we also look at whether there are such things as reliance interests. In other words, have people developed interest in reliance on that precedent such that those interests are strong enough that they should be overruled. And the force of stare decisis is itself an issue that is very hotly debated. There are some on the court that would say, if it's wrong, it's wrong, and we should not hesitate to write a constitutional decision that's wrong. Others on the court are much more likely to defer to the kind of considerations that are implicated in terms of reliance interests in stare decisis. Wayfair would probably focus on the complexity of all of the different taxing jurisdictions and would say that having to deal with that patchwork quilt of all of those taxing jurisdictions do constitute an undue burden on interstate commerce. South Dakota's best argument is that these uh, state sales or use taxes, even without a physical requirement, would not impose an undue burden on interstate commerce. There have been a lot of developments in terms of software, et cetera, that make going through the exercise of determining what taxes is due a lot easier. The huge change that's gone on is the growth of online commerce. If you think in terms of today, the options that are available to consumers in terms of going into a brick and mortar store or ordering online from an online company or increasingly ordering online from a company that also is a brick and mortar store. The time has come to, to revisit and to overrule Quill. Under the current Supreme Court case law, just about anything and everything these days is interstate commerce. So it casts a very, very broad reach. And this has been traditionally a very, I would say, hotly litigated uh, area, um, particularly as we think about federalism and where to strike the balance between things that truly are national in character and thus are permissibly regulated by, by Congress and the federal government, and those things that are properly left to the states.